<laughs> Hi, you guys. Welcome to our Wine and Dine show. This is One Ambassador, and if you guys are new here, welcome. Super excited to have you guys here and to be a part of our opportunity that we provide for you guys, which is wine, which is the funnest, amazing thing. And uh, my name is Tanya Rickard. I am the CCO here with Wine Ambassador, and I am passionate about wine. I always say, hello, my name is Tanya, and I love wine because, I, well, I do. <laughs> I love it. What's not to love? And, I, and I'm one of those kinds of people that thinks there's always a reason for wine. You, it, it could be just because you had a great day. It could be because you had a bad day. It's because you want to pair it with some, some food. It's because you want to have an Oreo and some wine, which goes really well together, let me tell you. And then it could be just because you want to, you want to just have some RRR time, right? So whatever it is, there's always a reason. It can be to celebrate weddings. It can be to celebrate the, the you know, celebrations of life, whatever, and everything in between. I could keep going. There's always a reason for wine. It's not wine, it's not, it's always wine not to me because you should always have wine. And anyway, so I'm super excited to have you guys here. I love, I love this opportunity. I'm not going to go into the comp plan or anything like that here. If you guys are new and you're, or you're just thinking about joining, make sure you join us for the Monday night opportunity call where we will cover all of that. But tonight I get to introduce one of my favorite people here. I love her so much, you guys. She's been around for quite a bit of time and stuck through and just worked, worked, worked. She is the epitome of what we like to have here with our, um, our leaders. She's one of the top and she was fortunate enough to win one of our wine labels. We have, and she won one, she has it, it's in her picture there behind her and she won the label. And this, the great thing about having that label is it'll be, it'll, it doesn't go away year after year we'll have more wine to fill that label so she gets to see her name on a new vintages every every year and, and we're really excited and again, of course you guys if you don't know i am talking about donna donna walker meyer she is amazing uh she's one of our lead instructors like i said and you guys she has the heart of gold and and she is just an amazing kind and loving person and she's really hard working she doesn't give up, not on herself and not on her students. And I, I just really appreciate her and all that she's done. So I'm going to let her. Um, oh, I guess I should do the toast. I got excited, guys. Got excited. Let's do the toast. Everyone got your ears. OK, so Peter, what should we toast to? Well, I, we have a couple exciting things in the last week. One is um, is the uh, another year around the sun for our uh, other label winner. Uh, Niall, Eddie, um, got a toast to that. And we've got a toast to our uh, own Brett Hudson, who somehow managed to get some, get, get an amazing wife that he got married to last Saturday that we had the pleasure of joining him for. So to all that and to our, you know, everything coming up. Cheers. Here's you guys. That's Brett. Cheers. Wow. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Got excited, but Donna can take it away. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was such an honor. I it was one of the biggest honors I've ever had in my life, winning that uh, label. Uh, I thank you so much. And I would like to thank all of my teammates for helping me get there as well, because um, I sure didn't do it by myself. And I'd like to welcome everybody to our Wine and Dine show. It's, today's May 25th, and it just happens to be National Wine Day. So happy National Wine Day. <laughs> um, we have uh, really awesome cooks tonight. Doing our appetizer is Kim Albers, and she's going to be doing an easy meat pie recipe. Joel Hooper will be sharing his main course uh, for oven slow, slow cooked pork ribs. And Kathy Bentley will be uh, sharing her recipe for fruit pizza for dessert. So I look forward to all these, they sound yummy. And uh, hopefully we will be giving you some good ideas for your Memorial Day weekend. Awesome. Just so you guys know, I'm gonna put the links to their recipes in the chat so you guys can get them there. And if you're watching this on the replay, it'll be in the description box below. Go ahead, Donna. Um, well, uh, that I was also gonna say, I think they're also posted on the official, uh, Facebook page for Wine Ambassador as well. So if you want to print those off there. Um, right now, uh, Kim, do you want to uh, go ahead and tell us about your appetizer? Sure. Um, what I, I, 
I've actually, I'm doing two versions of this. I often make this as just an appetizer, but sometimes I make it as, you know, our, our meal, our, our go-to meal. So when I'm using it as an appetizer, I use tube of crescent rolls and I take a pound of ground beef and I use hash browns, onions to put in the meat and of course use one egg to bind it. I do have the recipe posted. This is um, a little variation that actually my husband came up with. The first time I uh, made it with the crescents, of course I put the meat, the loose meat in here and pressed this on top of it to make a tart. And he's like, I like it better as pigs in a blanket. And I thought, well, I can make it look like a hot dog. <laughs> so that's what I come up with. And they're actually pretty handy. Living on the lake, we get unexpected company all the time. So I always try to find something that is finger food, you know, just fill them up <laughs> and go from there. So I'm going to um, bake these off. It's only going to take about 12 minutes. But then when I want to do it as a regular meal, I take um, grand biscuits, roll them out, and I put them in a really deep dish muffin tin, and then fill it up with my ground beef onion. And these are just so fast and easy to make because I just use this. Sam's Club hash browns, where I reconstitute them, add some hot water, drain them, uh, press them off a little bit, and I'm going to add the meat, the hash browns, and lots of cheese, and then just fill up my tins here with that mixture and bake those off. I also top them with just a little bit of a little circle of uh, dough too. So it does look like a little mini pot pie. And then these are my little mini crescent rolls. Kind of like instead of pigs in a blanket, it's, I don't know. I was in a blanket. In a blanket. <laughs> so they do kind of look like the way I'm crisscrossing the croissants, like little longhorns or something, but they're, they're so handy to have, especially when we want to run out on the pontoon and can bake these off wrap them up in foil, they'll stay nice and warm, and it's just nice finger food. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. It looks delicious. So if Joel's ready to go, I'm going to fill these up, throw them in the oven, and we'll see how they turn out. Hey, Joel, do you want to let us know what, how you're getting started? Yep. All right. So... Let me just see if I can turn this camera around. There we go. Okay, so my son's gonna help me out here. Noah's gonna help me. So what I'm doing is I'm doing, um, I just said um, slow oven cook back ribs or ribs. Um, now, I'm sure a lot of you know that when you do ribs in the oven, on the back of the rib, there's a, there's a membrane or like a, a, a watch membrane. And so in order to get a, the, the sauce and the stuff um, in, into the ribs properly, you want to take that membrane off. Now, I've always worked at struggling hard to get it off and pull off in pieces, but I looked online on YouTube and I found a really easy way to get them off and it actually works. I tried it earlier today and it worked. So the best thing to do is you want to get um, a, a piece of the membrane that you, you can, uh, get a hold of, and then you, you take a, a dry paper towel Get a hold of it, and then you just pull, and it actually gets all of it off. And that, like that, is like much easier than pulling it off of the hand because it's very, very slippery. And now it's the the meat is is, is now accessible. Okay, so that's the first thing. Okay, so that's the meat, and so the sauce is going to be very you know what? So the sauce is I like using. Sweet baby rays, okay. Um, so you want to add the whole bottle of that into your mixing bowl, I guess you can say. Add all of it into there. 
Make sure you get it all there. Okay, and then a cup of orange juice. Yeah, a cup of orange juice. Nice. Okay, add it in there. And then once it's in there, you want to get this sauce like consistent throughout. Okay. Make sure it's really consistent. Okay, and then doing that, we'll get the meat here. Put the meat in the pan. Okay, and so once this is done, so um, normally I would do this in the oven for three hours at 250. But today, because Memorial Day is coming up, um, I'm going to change up a little bit. And so you do um, two hours in the oven at 250 and then a toss on the barbecue for a little bit. Just kind of turn it on, on each side. And then, and then what they'll do is they'll make it a little crispy. Now, I've, I've never tried on the barbecue before, but um, I've heard this is a great way to do it. So that looks pretty good now. So let's add this to the rib. Okay, and when you're adding to the ribs, you want to do as much as possible with getting the ribs covered completely with the sauce. Okay, so add that. Easter. Add that to the ribs. That looks delicious, Joe. Oh, uh, and I tell you, man, like this, honestly, this is fall off the bone. Like it, it I, I guess with um the orange juice, it just like really gets into the meat and it makes it like so good fall off the bone goodness like it really is excellent okay so now that's basically done now so what we'll do because of the magic oven <laughs> you'll come back to me and you'll find that i already have it done in the oven and then and then we'll, we'll toss it on the grill okay so that's how you prepare it. And then when you come back to me, I'll be downstairs on the barbecue. Perfect. Awesome. Sounds wonderful. Excellent. All right, Kathy. Cool. Kathy, show us how you're getting started for your dessert. Where'd she go? Yeah, they're probably they're doing I think Kathy had to get out and come back in because she had audio, so she might need to be She's needed. She was, uh, I lost her. Probably need to co-host her again. Yeah. Well, while we're waiting for her, let's um, let's talk a little about Memorial Day coming up because the, what a better time to enjoy the wine than uh, than uh, celebration weekend. Absolutely. Yeah, and I've been, you know, and the wine that picture right there next to you is a wonderful wine with barbecue food. That's uh, I know what I'm talking to a Texas lady. It's got to be good for barbecue. So. Um, but uh, that and I've been and the wines that we've been including in your boxes the last couple of months, I've been keeping I've been keeping Memorial Day in mind. There's a wonderful Sauvignon Blanc, which is just terrific in the to chill, really chill and having this what in the weather. We had the Tanya, uh, Tanya Rosé that we sent out, another one that's wonderful to send out, the Tempranillo. All these would be absolutely terrific enjoying with your barbecue. But uh, but then when you get to your steaks and your ribs and your burgers. That's when you want your Donna. And for sure. Super, super good. I love so, it with everything, Peter. <laughs> well, Kathy, are you just, <laughs> just like who it was named after? So, Kathy, are you Kathy, there? You there? Kathy, you. Is she able to talk? Kathy? Did she ah, there she is. No, that's. That's Kim. It's Kim. Yep. Well, while she, while we're trying to get uh, Kathy connected here, I'll yep. go ahead and talk a little bit about our incredible club. We belong to, uh, we're members of an incredible wine discovery club, and we get fine wines from Napa and Sonoma Valley. And we encourage all of you, if you're not a member already, to join us by becoming either a customer or a ambassador, and you can even earn free wine. If you bring three customers in of your own, then you'll get your wine free the fourth month. So 
Um, every month you're going to have uh, a shipment of wine, boutique wines, never mass produced, shipped right to your door. And uh, there's nothing like it, you guys. Uh, you can um, you can have a connoisseur uh, palate and taste wines all over the world, but these wines are really something special. And we've been really spoiled with Tanya and Peter and Rory and Adele picking out uh, some incredible, incredible tasting wines for us. And, um, and thanks to Rory and Tanya for this amazing opportunity because we really do have the best wines and the best wine discovery club and the best comp plan in the world. So uh, we encourage everyone to join us and learn all about uh, wines and food pairings. And you can even earn trips. Uh, in about two to three weeks, we're gonna be on our way to Hawaii. And I'm really excited about that. So get your passports ready and join us. So get back to the person that brought you here and find out more details, find out how you can join us and become a member as well. So let's go back to um, Kathy. Is just joining again. I think she's, let me see if I can get her back in here. Still I not connected. She's trying here. So Kathy, I'm asking you to unmute. Let's see if you can do it. Hi, I unmuted, yeah. but I'm in the den, not the hey. <laughs> So we're doing hey. pizza. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, do you need any any prep? Do you need some time? Um, well, I can I, I can run in there and what I've done is I've I've made the batter up and I've got it on the cookie sheet and I'm gonna put it in the oven for 15 minutes. But first we wanted to show you how to open the bottle of Hudson. So if we open the bottle of Hudson and then I put the cookie uh, in the oven. Then I just need about 10 minutes, come back and I'll decorate it. Okay. That sounds great. Yeah, it's always worth showing people how to open a bottle of bubbly. Okay, that's what we'll do. <laughs> okay, let's. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm gonna get my steps in both. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good, an excuse. You know, you're gonna burn more calories, so you have to drink more wine to make up for it. <laughs> you betcha, you betcha. Okay, so I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna turn my video off here and the video should be on in there unless it's kicked me off again. Okay. <laughs> in which case, I don't know what I did. Uh, but okay, I'm gonna go try that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's see if she's got it here. Hopefully guys, technical difficulty. Yeah, yeah. but you know. From the, 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 that we have amazing wines guys, so. We, we yeah. do the best we can here and we and I want the whole reason we do this as well is I want to show you guys that you don't have to be a connoisseur you can also just be a wine lover and Kathy's trying to hold up the bottle there I don't know if you guys can see her oh there we go yep okay go Don't know if the screen is showing. We have to mute some people out so that the sound, but I don't know if we can see you guys. Can I do? Oh, that was smooth. <laughs> the cork out smooth, guys. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, well done, my friend. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, you're. While you're enjoying your Hudson and getting things together here, we'll go back to Kim. Kim, how are you doing with those appetizers? Well, they're in the oven. Awesome. How long do you need? <laughs> you're
You're muted. I need my glasses on. You can't see. But uh, yeah, they're in the oven. They should take about 12 minutes till the croissants are browned up and good. But I'm always looking for something fast and easy to make. Um, you know, living on the lake, we get company that pops up regularly. Um, now that we're getting close to uh, summer, you can't tell it by today. I mean, gosh, look at it out. Been raining and storming and so forth, but looking forward to summer, no doubt about it. So I'm letting my Donna Walker breathe so I can enjoy it when the meat pies are done. But I take a page out of Tanya's book. I like to start out with something light. This is the Pinot Grigio that I absolutely love. Um, it really reminds me a lot. Um, it's the discoveries. Uh, oh no, Sauvignon Blanc. Because it reminds me a lot of um, that uh, Chenin Blanc Viognier that I love so much. Nice and light and summery. Yeah, that's why I included it this month. I knew everybody was coming to Memorial Day and you had to have that nice, refreshing, chilled wine to start, oh, your, to start your meal with. It is. I'm glad you're enjoying it. That was a that was a that was a Sauvignon Blanc we were really excited to get. We we had an opportunity to get something that we normally wouldn't, and so we went and got a lot of it. So I'm going to be sending it to you guys a cup a few times this summer. But uh, that's that one is is such such a perfect summer wine it's great with great just to start your meal it's wonderful with salads and vegetables and like charcuterie plates little plates of uh uh vegetables all that it's great with so tell me why'd you pick the uh donna walker with your pies well after all i mean obviously lady, right mm -hmm. <laughs> and i am making meat pies with red meat um i was gonna do the rosé and Don actually suggested that, um, you know, I, I do something, you know, a cab or maybe Niles uh, Pinot Noir because I'll, I'll have to admit, I'm still acquiring my taste for the drier cab sabs. I love Pinot Noir. I always have. Um, but it's, you know, it's, hey, I'm in the learning process. That's what I love about this wine club is we get to discover so many wonderful wines and experience them and and it's just learning so much yeah and, and you're right with the with the hamburger in there the cab is a wonderful choice it so. is. Now Eddie would go well as well, but I, I really love that, that we have the opportunity we have here to allow you guys to try things, to start off, to acquire your palate, Kim, like you were saying, right? I mean, not everybody has had the opportunity to travel and taste other wines everywhere. And that's one, one thing that I think that we bring to you, that ability to have a tasting. And you have the tasting notes in our back office to help you as well if you're new and you haven't done this before. So we really try to help all, all angles of everybody, all aspects of everyone. So anyway yeah and it's why we're on here wednesday night it's one of the things is to help help you learn about wine and talk about it from all mm. levels of experience and that's why that's what's fun it's fun to watch all of you um learn more about the wine i i'm blown away with the wine pairings that everybody says they're going to be doing on wednesday like wow you guys have gotten good at this <laughs> so this is fun to watch and well of course it, you can't go wrong with donna uh -huh. Well, and you know what's funny is I just got done spending about three weeks taking care of my sister. She had open heart surgery and um, she lived in San Diego for years and years and years. And they used to make the pilgrimage up to Napa, but she only drank Chardonnays. So when I knew I had to go down there and take care of her, I loaded up, oh my gosh, you know, the, the Sauvignon Blancs, uh, you know, just a variety and you know what she actually really liked that saint patty's white blend oh yeah isn't it amazing that one. if you think you only like one wine i always say just try because that's what i love about our wine club is that we have the different opportunities the different options so that it gives you the ability to try things because now i bet you she's sad that she didn't try others I mean, she went her whole life without trying another wine that's sad to me you know, that's a travesty. Guys, try everything. Try it more than once. Pair it. 
try it at different temperatures, make it, let it breathe and try it later. Like there's all different tweaks and things you can do with wine to really make it more amazing. So don't just give up and think you've tried it once and you're done. Don't do that. I promise you, you will regret it. But Donna, back to you. You want to check with Joel, right? Absolutely. Don't unmute. Yep. Okay. So we're now down because presto, it's in the oven and, and in the grill. So um, I, I, I took it out of the pan, tossed it on the, the grill, um, and then used up some of the sauce. Just kind of, um, you just want to put it on the meat. And it really doesn't need to be on it very long, right? But then you just uh, turn it now. Like I mentioned, it's, the, the meat is falling off the bones. So you have to be very careful when you're putting it on here. You want to get a hold of it on across the, so the bones going that way um, on the scene. <laughs> Perfect, what it's called. Flip it over. Almost done. Hold on, Joe. I'll be right up there to Canada. I'll be there. Quit looking. Yeah. Save me some. You look delicious. Spectacular. So it's actually been on the grill a little while already. So I think it's about ready to, to, to come off. So just a little more. Yeah, all right. So, so let's uh, get on here. And then we'll go upstairs and plate it and give it a, give it a taste. Oh, I, I'm excited to give it a try. All right, let's go upstairs. So I, Follow me upstairs. Joe, the first time we've ever had a location change on the wine and dine. <laughs> Joel, everybody's telling you your, your ribs look amazing. They would, would love to try them. So <laughs> now that we're in the light, like look, like, it looks so good. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, they look great. Delicious. Yeah. All right, let's plate it. <laughs> All right, and I, I I also am trying with the Donna Walker. Yay. This is the first time of trying that, and the little bit I had is oh so good. So I, I'm excited to give it a try with the ribs. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what you think, Joel. So let us know when you try it. All right, so let's uh, just watch that. Watch, watch, watch how easy it comes off. Look at that, like, oh, oh my goodness. It's going to hold the plate. I'm just going to get it a little easier. Oh, like, look at that. Look at the meat. It just, oh, man. Jesus, baby. Comes off so easily. Oh, my goodness. Like a good piece here. Oh yeah, look at that. Let's try it. Oh man, love that meat. Mm. Right, was it wine? Oh, that is, mm. and I love how the wine when you when you drink with meat. It, it, it changes the taste in your mouth. Like that is just, oh man, that's so good. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that face says everything, doesn't it? <laughs> Give me ribs, oh, Joel. Man, I love wow. Oh, you, you're gonna make me go out to a barbecue joint tonight because I can't <laughs> take it. I tell you, definitely. I'm definitely gonna. We need television. <laughs> I'm definitely going to do those ribs like that from now on. Like it is doing it in the oven is one thing. It's great. You know, it, it, the winter time doing it in the oven for three hours is fine. But in the summertime, do it, do it for two hours in the oven and, and then toss it on the barbecue. It is that much better. 
it, it was it was just spectacular. It was great. Yeah. So thank you and uh awesome. <laughs> thank you. I think you need some alone time after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was amazing. <laughs> <Seriously. laughs> now go read all the comments. Everyone's giving you love, so you're awesome. <laughs> I, I will for sure. <laughs> oh, that's that's awesome, Joe. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, let's see how our dessert's doing. It looks like Kathy, are you ready to show us? I have to see your your uh, cookie out of the oven. Maybe not. Kathy, <laughs> are you there? Maybe she needs to unmute. Oh, she's unmuted. Oh, okay. I love pizza, dessert pizzas. That's one of my favorite things. I do too, especially oh. in the summertime. Don't you find? Oh, I love them in the summer. Oh god, and yeah. even better, you cook them on the grill. You, oh, cook, yeah. you cook your pizzas on the grill. I, I've done a s'mores pizza where you take pizza dough, crumble the graham crackers, put some marshmallows and some chocolate, and just stick it on the grill. Oh, yep. that sounds wonderful. It, it really is. Yeah, that with chocolate as well, and melted it on there with a little bit of grilled fruit. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. And you know what wine if you're gonna put the chocolate. In. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I don't know. Are you, are you ready there, Kathy? Can you hear us? I don't know if she can hear us. Kathy, what? can you can you hear us? We're having technical difficulties there, you guys, but it looks delicious. Yeah. Well, she's got going on, but maybe Kim <laughs> maybe we can hop back to Kim and see what Kim's going, what she's doing. Well, it looks like it needs about three more minutes. I just put the timer on again. Okay, well. All right. Well, while we're doing that, um, <coughs> excuse me a second. Does anyone have any questions about what wines to have with your barbecue on Memorial Day? I mean, like I said, your chilled wines are a great way to start your meal. <clears throat> and then, you know, the reds are. But the one thing you want to do with your with your barbecued wines, when it gets hot out, chill your wines. Chill your reds more than you yeah. think you should. Yeah. We've even convinced Rory that that's a good idea because yeah. uh, Tanya's awesome. relentless. On <laughs> you guys, it's just a, something a little bit more <coughs> chill the wine when you're having a barbecue with the heat of the barbecue. And then a little bit of that uh, cooler red wine that you normally maybe have. Just the combination is amazing. So I definitely recommend you guys try it. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it, it'll it warm up after you take it out. So your first glass will be really chilled and it'll slowly warm up and you get to taste all the differences as it gets a little warmer. So yeah. it's it's one of the great ways to experience a, a glass, a bottle of wine. It's not just one little sip and say, this is how it tastes. It's it's a whole conversation with the bottle as you go through the whole time, the whole thing. Absolutely. Yep. I remember you mentioning that, Peter. So yeah, I took this. Oh, I, I stuck it in the fridge about 8.15 for it to get chilled. And then I had, I poured myself a glass too, so I have time to breathe because somebody broke my decanter. Oh, geez. So somebody, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's, well, that's one of the things I like best about our wine club is even though you think you've got your favorites and... It, you're more likely to try new things because we trust everybody that's picked out our wines and they're all delicious. I've never had one that I didn't lo love. So you get to try new things that you wouldn't ordinarily try probably. Yeah, part of it is because, well, one of the people, the person who will absolutely not let it get through is Kenya. And you may have heard she loves wine. <laughs> I do love wine a little bit. <laughs> Doug, no, we Doug, all love wine. Doug's asking a question about smoked uh, pork loin. What pairs well? This, oddly enough, I love Merlot with that, but that's my opinion. What? Yeah, what it, yeah. The smoke. I mean, that the Merlot is wonderful with the the red wines with the smoke. It's part is one of the great combinations. The Merlot would work great. Um, the cabs are the cab may be a little much, but it could work great. You see how it worked with the ribs, but that was because of the barbecue sauce. Um, but you do great with the Merlot, the Tempranillo, the Grenache. The Tempranillo yeah. is great as well, yeah. Yeah. So, you can't go wrong, I mean, Doug. You can't go wrong. 
<laughs> really, I mean, I don't think there's any of our reds that would be wrong. It would just all there all be a slightly different experience. The lighter, but slightly lighter body of like a Tempranillo okay. or the Grenache would I'm make it be wonderful. The off the husk. Oh, there you go, Kathy. She's showing us here. She's back. Thank oh. you. Welcome back. <laughs> Hi, thank you. <laughs> Did I say I'm Kathy and I love wine? <laughs> And I want to tell you about the brute because I learned some stuff about the brute. You know, you know, brute means dry. And so brute is a, is a dry wine. And so you want to pair it with something that it's really a neat dessert wine. If you can pair it with it and with, uh, with more of a dessert type thing. So I don't know if you got uh, my other camera going. My daughter, yeah. Casey, is in the kitchen. Yeah. She's shown up and she's going to start. Kathy? We lost you again. We lost you, Kathy, but we can see your daughter. So Kathy's daughter, welcome. Can you show us what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, where'd she go here? Kathy's daughter, can you unmute? She's unmuted. Oh, start she is, okay. Kathy's daughter, I don't know your name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the family. <laughs> but yeah, what she was saying about this, about this bubbly and dessert is it's, yeah. it, the, the bubbles have this wonderful cleaning, cleansing quality in your palate. So anything could be heavy becomes lighter just by virtue of having the bubbles. And, okay. and you don't need sweet with sweet dry because the sweet dessert will make everything seem less sweet. So you may as well start with something dry. Right. Dry compliment sweet so much better than having a sweet wine. I never, ever recommend having a sweet wine with a dessert. I just, I think it's not the, not the fit. So I totally. No, agree. no, no. You well, have a sweet wine for dessert, not as, not with dessert. Exactly. Well, you guys, it looks, I'm such a fan of having some technical difficulties. So I apologize, but her, um, her, her link is listed in the chat and I'll have it listed below as well. So thank you guys. I'm uh, sorry, Kathy, that we're having some problems there. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. We still love you. So we still, you're still a part of our family. But anyway, I, Kathy's daughter. we're good. We have, we have cheese. We're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the page, read the recipe. It's really good. <laughs> Go try what's your, it. What's your daughter's name, Kathy? Her name is Casey. Casey. Hi, Casey. Welcome. Hi, Casey. What do you call it? Welcome to the family. <laughs> she's also she's also one of my new students. So awesome. Perfect. Welcome, Welcome to the family. It's a family affair. <laughs> yeah. So well, let's see how Kim's doing with the I think they should be out of the oven by now. Yep, they sure are. So this is more of the hearty entree part of it. And then this is what I would typically um serve on the boat just wrap them up in foil and take them out so it's my little mini meatloaf in a crescent roll so it's kind of a meal of one and of course the chopped up vegetables um some homemade dill dip um when joe doesn't really care for the horseradish as much but i always make a batch of dill dip and then put horseradish in it and i particularly love it with ground beef absolutely love horseradish mm. Looks no, amazing. No, so and I actually like horseradish with um, the Donna, like pairing the. Oh one. yeah, yeah, I that's. Really a, like that. You're right. Oh wow, yeah. that is a wonderful pairing. Yep. Yeah. And I never make a, you know, a, a veggie platter without radishes. Period. <laughs> uh, you're to you're yeah. you're taught you're preaching to the choir here. Absolutely. Well, and sometimes I like getting the reducio root and slicing it. And I'll pickle it with some vinegar, some sugar, and you just do it for like 15 minutes and then pull it out. And oh my God, that on a salad is awesome. Yeah. Okay. You're living on a lake and you're making all this great food. You're going to really make us jealous here. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing a lot of my favorite things. So, um, okay. So what I got to know is how does this taste? Mmm. Yeah, pair it with the wine, honey. Let's see. Yes, I know. I got to grab a piece of my. Mm. 
<laughs> I just love how light and flaky and still kind of crunchy because the oil from the meat's kind of drained down so the bottom of it's kind of crunchy. Well, Donna, I'm starting to love your cap tab. <laughs> <laughs> you have it with a little that of the really horse. It really is some... awesome. You know what? It's not as happy as some of the cabs I've tried. That's mm -hmm. delicious. Mm hmm. I agree. I mean, it's. Mm. I'm glad I won you over. <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a CAD staff fan. I love it. Uh, well, you guys, honestly, I, I have to say there's not one variety I'm not a fan of. For the, I, I just love wine. <laughs> I love what it, I love how it, may, it just kind of takes your worries away, makes you relax, makes you kind of groove. You guys, I finished mine. So that's a great sign, right? That means it's good. So Yeah, and one of the best things about it is being able to spend time with friends and family who enjoy yeah. the wine. That's, Absolutely. Yeah. And but, we get to do this every Wednesday, spend with my uh, my extended family here, so. Awesome. I love it. Well, thank you, Donna, so much for helping co-host. Thank you to your team. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kathy. And thank you, Peter. You guys, we get to do this. Every, like Peter said, we get to do this every Wednesday. So please make sure to join us. If you are new and you're wanting to join, please get back with the person that brought you here. We would love to have you be a part of our team. So I'm going to wish you guys a good night. God bless. And we will see you guys on um, their Saturday train. Otherwise, we'll see you guys on the next Wine and Dine show. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Night-night.